anniversary! Hey! Happy, happy cake birthday! Day. <laughs> welcome. Good morning. Welcome to Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. I'm Scott from Ristacob.com. And my it's not working great. I'm Seth from Every Place. Good Mine is guys. working great. Yeah. Uh, so, and the three of us, we are Markwood Men's Breakfast Club. Good to see you again. And uh, it's it's our anniversary. Yeah, it is. Kind of. Now, some of you might be confused, as I was, because I was waiting for episode 52. You know, one a week. And then it was pointed out to me that uh, we weren't doing episodes one a week um, in the early days. Our first video was posted November 10th. Actually, the first two videos were November 10th, right? Didn't That's right. We, didn't video we, sing a little, we sung a little ditty for, uh, That's right. for Sir the, Walter Raleigh. the diabetic man, which I said the correctly e. for the very first time. The E.E. E. Diabetic man, and um, and then we posted the first Mark Men's Breakfast Club. Um, kind of looked like this a little, but not a lot. It's a lot like this. Yeah, a lot. I haven't changed much, but yeah, it's it's been one year as of November tenth that we've been doing this. But just absolutely shocking. But uh, thank you all, and uh, we hit another milestone this week, which was another shocking moment. Yeah, six hundred subscribers. That's that's amazing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for watching us and subscribing and well, at least subscribing with the intention of watching. That's, I don't know if they actually That's watch. how I do. I just go all <laughs> over the place on YouTube and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Yeah, I'm all about I'm all about the subs. But it makes me feel good. So, no, really it's uh, it's awesome to have you here and uh, wow, a year. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. We were we were talking about uh, how this all came about and and we're a little bit hazy on this. I do know we were driving to Ohio and talking about some ideas uh, for videos for Tobacco Advent. One idea that we never did get through was uh, the Manvention, Man, Manfessions. That's that's right. We have a whole list of confessions that men might make. That's right. <laughs> to me, they look like they would make great t-shirts and things like that, but uh, yeah. we'll, we'll get on that someday, I think, maybe. Anyway, uh, as far as tobacco... Like, like we... I cry when I watch Chick Flicks 2. <laughs> That's, that, that isn't at all what I would want to share. Confess. You know, we started out with Sir Walter Raleigh, and we, we discussed whether we would, would wrap this year up with Sir Walter Raleigh, and then we said, why would we do that to ourselves? Again? Because all of our Sir Walter Raleigh, like last time, is a brick. It, I don't know what the deal is. Our, our local, let's call them tobacconists, it's really the closest place that has it is a head shop. And it's all dried up. They have a couple tobaccos just to say they sell tobacco. But we, we have another classic tobacco that um, a lot of pipe smokers, and, and in particular, a lot of cob smokers make as their regular their regular choice. Hmm. And that's Carter Hall. Never so heard of it's it. an old classic. And uh, we'll just go ahead and cap off the year with some Carter Hall. I don't know if you guys can see the Get Well <laughs> balloon in the corner we purchased that specifically uh because it's so pitiful looking <laughs> how ironic is it that the get well balloon is dying so slowly also we're I, not well i i have a special pipe to smoke in and i'm sorry i wasn't ignoring what no, you were saying and that is i am going to break in my chris morgan uh this is this is a pipe that he designed as a follow-up to his win, or uh, I think he came in second place, 2013 Cobb Foolery Contest with a pipe of a very similar yeah, spark, design. Sparky. And I asked him if he could make one of these for me, and he did. And it's look at this. It's got the uh, it's got the Morgan Pipe stamp on the bottom with the bunny rabbit. And I've not smoked this before, and I figured this is it. This is this is the occasion. I want to smoke this. So I'm going to load this full of Carter Hall. What does uh, what does the package say about Carter Hall, boy? I don't know. A lot. Since 1856, we at John Milton Co. have dedicated our resources to producing one-of-a-kind, quality pipe tobacco brands at affordable prices. Our commitment is to meet the personal smoking preferences of all of our customers. The unique blend of Carter Hall pipe tobacco is achieved by adhering to the very high standards we set in every step of production. The attention and care paid to selecting and curing our tobacco equals that of blending and finishing. As a result, Middleton Pipe Tobacco brands provide superior consistent consistency, ensuring your smoke pleasure, smoking pleasure every time. No name products 
could compromise these tough standards, and that would reduce your smoking pleasure. Middleton Pipe Tobacco brands are your best assurance to quality and value. So it tells me nothing about the tobacco. Oh, on the front it says, What smokers like about Carter Hall Pipe Tobacco? Taste, aroma, moistness, freshness, mildness, no bite, even burning, good price. I was just going to say, I really appreciate the moistness of this tobacco. Above all. A distinguished pipe tobacco. Well, um, to, to symbolize the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing and, and haven't for the last year, I'm going to be smoking one of my one of my favorite pipes. What are you doing? <laughs> the it's, Ever it's, Classic. It's, it's International it's, Corn Cop Pipe Month. But it. But I feel like. All right, fine. Uh, you I know. Just, I'm just guilted him into smoking a cop. Oh, no. Just as I'd like you to be guilted into smoking a cop. No. All right. Well, then I guess I'll smoke a cob. I, mean, I, I just went through saying that this is like one of the, the big cob smokers tobaccos. Well, I, yeah, but special occasion and whatnot. How often have, do I smoke a graybo? <laughs> once, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I don't know that that's it's happened something once. that you even want um, to repeat. How about this? <laughs> Pony Express. Giddy up. That is one teeny little pipe. No, wait, wait, that's not a Pony Express. That's one of the, um, I don't know which. It's either a Huck Finn or a Tom Sawyer. Because it's shorter than the uh, typical Pony Express. All right. Uh, all right. Here, this is, is that a... that satisfactory? This is a, uh, that's a Pony Express. Compare that to what you've got there. Yeah, see? Hmm. It's more different. Cool. Okay. I'm a little surprised I, I, I like this. Were you not expecting to? Mm-hmm. I was expecting to not like it at all. Really? Yeah. Por qué? I, I don't know. Um, I think I tried it a long, long, long time ago. And remembered. And remembered not liking it. And, and that could have been one of those situations <laughs> where I got a hold of some bad stuff that was sitting on a shelf for 120 years. <laughs> like a brick? But with a, but with a broken seal. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I'm surprised. So, we thought we should have a, a, a birthday cake, an anniversary cake, um, and, and then we realized, no, we're too lazy for that. As you can tell from our hats, from our balloons, I'm sure, we took a trip to the dollar store. So, at the dollar store, we found some cake. So it's, you know really the kind of, it's the kind of cake we prefer. You know what's going to be good. We got some some Swiss cakes. Um Swiss rolls. But, um, well, by name only. So these aren't little Debbies. These are these are Mrs. Freshly's <laughs> Swiss uh, rolls. Genuine Mrs. Freshly's. Genuine. Ask but, for so, them by name. So you know you know that you bought your Swiss rolls at the dollar store when they don't even come with a little piece of cardboard. Oh my god! To keep your cakes flat. What? Okay. What's the expiration on this? Um, December of this year. All right. Yeah. It's fine. All right. It's fine, but it's... Everything is um real solid. That's wrong. It's not... The, the cake isn't fluffy. The cream isn't creamy. No. It's, it's more like a... It's like a marshmallow. Like a jelly bean. Yeah. All right. That's... No, that's not... That's wrong. <laughs> Well, I mean, I was willing to concede and say, okay, we'll, we'll have the Little Debbies, uh, although I would typically prefer a Hostess product. But man, Mrs. Freshly's, avoid it by name. Wow. So we've accomplished a lot. Or accomplished. We've done a lot. <laughs> I don't know that we've accomplished much. I like to much. say accomplished. Over the last year, starting with, pretty amazingly, right out of the... Roll the montage. We can have a montage. Oh, that would mean more work for boy. Forget the montage. Who has the time? If you want to? <laughs> I wonder if there's a if there's a program that would allow me to, to put a link <coughs> that just automatically goes and plays five seconds of each YouTube video. 
random five and just, seconds. Just, just, like, just like a reload, but reloads to the new, the next page in and, the and, series. And basically it would be <coughs> me complaining about my hair. <laughs> That's the stuff that happens off camera usually. Oh my Right gosh. before. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set a camera up sometime and, and start filming that. Um, so over the last year, we have done a lot. A lot that I never would have um, imagined doing before. I mean, I've smoked... 8,000% more <laughs> pipe tobacco over the last year than um, the years previous. Before that, I had smoked a pipe maybe 50 times. Now it's been, <laughs> during tobacco advent, it was 50 times in a couple weeks. Um, almost. Yeah, almost. Um, and then the number of tobaccos I had smoked, I think it was limited strictly to lane one q <laughs> Surprise, surprise. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I, mean, I, I, over 35 years of smoking, had narrowed it down to the best tobacco, so you didn't have to go through all that. <laughs> right, thank you. <clears throat> Do you still feel that way? Um, to me, Lane 1Q is kind of like a comfortable pair of jeans or, or uh, tennis shoes. They're just, you, they, it feels right every time. Okay? Now, is it the best tobacco I've ever smoked? No, of course not. But uh, it's consistent, and I enjoy it. It's um, best bang for the buck. I would say so. I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an awesome bang for the buck. Because there, there are some tobaccos that are really, really good, but pricey, and not something that you would want to want to indulge in every day, every right. time. And that's part of the fun of trying something new that might be considered a little bit of a luxury. Right? I mean, sure. Hey, I wonder what, what this Stonehaven's all about if I could try that. Yeah. All right. And I just happen to have some Stonehaven here that we might try in a future video. Awesome. Um, but I would never wait in the line or pay a fortune for any brand of tobacco because there's so much of the reasonably priced stuff I haven't smoked. Yeah. How, how much Sutliff do we have that we haven't smoked? So much I mean, right, right there alone, there's so plenty of things to yeah. try. And they're reasonably priced. I mean, we we have tins. Trying to think, uh, like the um, Drew Estates. We bought a bunch of Drew Estates tobacco yep. that I, I don't think we paid more than uh, ten or twelve dollars a tin. Yeah, as you guys know, you can find good deals everywhere. And then one of the things that I have have picked up on from day one since the first time we went, maybe it was going to Nashville. The, in in the, in the car on the way back from Nashville that prompted all of this, because that was around August, mm, um, that September. Be. That's probably when we started really talking about seriously doing Mark Woodman's Breakfast Club. We we had discussed. Dad really wanted to do some sort of a show um, together, something uh, episodic where we could get together, have a reason to get together, and hang yeah, out in the shop and hang out. And and as much as I enjoy woodworking, Seth, if he doesn't have a task that he needs to perform. It's not his thing to just hang out in the shop, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Um, and so we were talking about it, and and in Nashville before we started doing this, I didn't know anybody. The very first time we went last year, and I was just blown away by the um, generosity within the pipe community. I mean, absolutely generosity of spirit or generosity of... generosity all over the place. I mean, people people were what? No, keep yeah, I, I mean. You know, people were, were warm and welcoming. It was a, an incredibly um, friendly community. People that I had never met before, but had you know knew some things about me through watching the Aristocop channel, um, came up and introduced themselves. And I mean, it was a bit of a surreal experience having a bunch of people know me as boy and not having a clue in the world who they were. were. But then um, actual generosity with giving. There it was so much tobacco being shared you know pipes everything people were just like yeah here have this and that's that's a rare quality in many communities um whether it's you weren't raised with that because i'm a hoarder right i mean seriously guys i have a problem if if i did not have my bride keeping me in check you would have found me my body under a pile of something yeah (laughs) yeah and and the other thing is it still might happen the other thing is we've talked before, neither you or I have, you know, we, we've talked about doing, or we have done the love languages assessment. Mm-hmm. And um, if you're not familiar with that, Guy wrote a book and basically he's discovered that 
there are five basic languages that we communicate love. And so for some people, spending quality time together is how you show how they understand love and how they, they best receive mm-hmm. feeling loved. You know, some people for them it's it's um, receiving, uh, words, receiving gifts, words right? of affirmation, uh, or or receiving gifts. You know, words of affirmation. You know, what really makes them feel good? What fills up? He calls it a love tank. You know, some things might fill it up a little bit, but then certain things just really fill that up and make make someone feel worthy. Um, and so, for some people, it's say. Hey, you did a really great job. Oh, thank you. They're going to hold on to that. For some people, they're like, yeah, I know, and move on. <laughs> <coughs> and then for others, it's it's gifts. And so receiving gifts is what makes them really feel good. And then we have a tendency to speak in our love language. So the person that that getting gifts makes them feel really great, they're more likely to go out and give gifts. And they spend a lot of time thinking about what would this person really like and and yada yada, and and Dad and I, neither of us, we're both quality time guys. Mm-hmm. Neither of us are gift guys. Although so, oddly enough, we like receiving gifts. Sure, and I like giving a gift, but I am I am unlike some people. And I got to tell you, Brother Boontar is a guy who makes a mental note when he hears something about you that mm-hmm. oh, I'm really passionate about this or that. Man, he makes a note of that, and he he actively pursues right. those things. I mean, it's uh, it's it's rare to see somebody as thoughtful as Boontar. Yeah, I mean, I, I I find him rare. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and so and delightful. <laughs> that's okay. You two <laughs> split it up. Um, and so one of the very things that was incredibly obvious to me at the the first Nashville show is the level of generosity and the the level of I think just the mass of people there that have gift giving as a love language, because I've seen it time and time again. We as soon as we started filming the videos, Dad posted on Aristocob and asked, "Hey, send us a little bit of your favorite tobacco." And we got tobacco in droves. I mean, that's yeah, that was amazing. So shocking. We we hadn't done anything yet right. at that point. Our channel hadn't even launched at that point, so there's no reason. For anybody to Which, have taken the time to do. By that. the way, if you missed last week's announcement, <coughs> <laughs> we are we are looking for voluntary uh, one ounce samples of your favorite tobacco, and uh, we're, we'll be doing tobacco advent again this year. So it's it's getting close. Check out last week's video, and also in the description of that video, I put my address and uh, and then mmbclub.com um, has. At least it will by this posting for sure. Blast. Has a list of the things that we have smoked, and so if you got something that's not on there, that would be awesome um, because we enjoy trying new things. I think, I think we've pretty much managed over the last year to smoke something different every week, just about, just about um, including through Tobacco Advent. So almost seventy-five different tobaccos hmm. that we've we've smoked. Um, it's pretty incredible. I'm not smoking mine at all today. We smoke hard so you don't have to. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, you should be smoking this. It's all right. So that that was one of the things that has blown me away over and over again over the last year. The the generosity between people just finding things and saying, Hey, you know, here's a, a pipe. I saw it. It was weird. Thought of you. Um, to here, try this tobacco. It's just incredible. So... How do we respond in kind? I mean, um, we're not so good at it, but we we like to do some things like we'll be doing with um, Tobacco Advent, where we come up with the idea of giving people a cornament in exchange for their tobacco sample. And, um, you know, it's not much, but it's something systematic for us that we were able to, I don't know, force ourselves to be giving in a way. I mean, again, I don't want to turn this into confessions or manfessions about my tendency to want to hoard but I remember uh, working for a guy who gave me five pocket knives to give to customers and uh, a month later when we were traveling together uh, again I was a salesman he said so do you need more of those knives sure he said well how many of them do you have left well how many of them did you give me so I gave you five because I I have five of them (laughs) yeah yeah that and I think that even saying it was the first time I realized oops yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. That's a problem. I actually went on a, a therapeutic journey at that point and started giving things away to people. 
And I remember giving something to Brent Bond and, and him just wanting to refuse it. Whatever it was, it was something that was more than I would normally right. give somebody. And it's like, look, you're helping me. Just take this. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the other thing is you know, for, for guys like us where it's not something that's just naturally on our mind, we want to be generous and we just recognize that we have to do it intentionally. And I think that that's okay. You know, there's a there's a tendency to feel like if you have to do something with intent, then it's not genuine. Right. But but I, I think the underlying spirit is what's genuine. And so, you know. So um, what is our love language? This is our love language. Yeah. We get to spend time with you in this way. So we hope uh, <coughs> receive this <laughs> as our gift to you. And we get to spend time with each other in this way. So it's, it's cool. And if you'd like one of these Swiss cakes, we'd be really happy to <laughs> send it to you. Oh, man. We have half of a Swiss cake yeah. down here. So do we have any big plans then moving forward? You know, any, any, any big changes? or We have Tobacco Advent. Yeah. That's going to be huge. And, and I, I don't Entering think we're ready season. to announce what we are thinking about doing. But we're thinking about doing something new. Uh, not not really changing the format of this weekly Wednesday um, uh, show like we tried where we did the two shows a week. We didn't like that at all, no. uh, or breaking it in half. No. But we're thinking about something else that uh, might be interesting. So keep, stay tuned. Yeah, for down the road when one of us has more time in their life to do things. Uh, but speaking of not having much time, there's another reason why we're celebrating, and we have hats and cake and balloons um especially this one back here the birthday balloon um i'm gonna be a dad for a second time what yeah uh you mean you mean like i was trying to hint at last mm -hmm. week trying to draw that out of you mm -hmm. just like that because we hadn't told everybody we or, needed to tell yet or is that the video that'll air next week because we screwed it up so bad i don't know you'll see next week's video next week is <laughs> Seth's mustache is gonna be so his facial hair is going to be even thinner than today. Uh, speaking of that, I had a job interview this weekend. Um, ended up having a job interview on Friday and looked absolutely ridiculous with a mustache. So had two days of facial hair growth to help kind of fill that in. And then I go back for a second interview in a couple of days. So I will shave again, but I don't want to lose this job because I look like... So this is the Movember thing you're, yes. you're trying to participate yes. in. Yeah. Yeah, definitely you want to bait and switch and get hired without the stupid molestache <laughs> and then show up to work with the molestache. Well, I figure if, if I get hired, if I get hired, I'll have two weeks' notice, and so it'll be the very, very end of November. I mean, isn't the deal with November, December it's before. you shave it off and you let it grow. You just don't no. shave it? I've no. seen people that that's all they're doing. No, that's no shave November. Two different things. No shave November kind of started with men just wanting to be lazy. And they said, well, shave the face and then just not shave again. Movember specifically, someone said, hey, no shave November, that's a good idea, but let's make it a nonprofit thing. And so they did, and they said, you shave and you leave just the mustache for the whole month. So you grow a mustache. You shave clean, you grow the mustache, because nobody's going to ask a guy, why aren't you shaving? Why haven't you shaved? But they will ask, why are you shaving a mustache? You look ridiculous. And then you can say, well, it's actually for charity. So it creates an open door for talking about the charity, uh, talking about raising money, donations, etc. I'm celebrating Bo Brovember, and that is where you, you really don't care uh, what other people think. That's it. That's I fine. <laughs> and that's, that's usually where I am. No, you know what? I can tie, okay, I can tie a Brovember thing in here. I was shaving yesterday. And I just couldn't get the nape of my neck shaved properly. And I kept going over and over and over it again. And this morning, I'm all broken out under my mm. neck. And this reminds me of the time that I went to the store. I was just sick and tired of shaving. And I'm looking at the stuff that I'd never <coughs> really noticed before. These little cans Nair. of powder that you could use to basically dissolve away your facial hair. And it was like um, magic shave or something like this. And as I'm reading it, I realize, hold on a second, this was developed primarily for African-American men who I didn't realize often have a problem with ingrown hairs, mm. right? Because a, especially if you have a whisker that wants to curl, then you'll get those ingrown hairs. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is great. 
I'm going to buy this. So I go home. I follow the instructions. It came with this little plastic scraper of a razor. There was no razor, really. It was just like a squeegee. Right. And I wet my face. I put the stuff on. You're supposed to wait for five minutes. Well, I'm a minute in, and it's it's really, burning. really burning. And I go a little bit longer, and it's burning some more. And I think at about the two-minute point, I'm like, screw this. And I grab that little razor thing, and I went like this, and I, I drew blood with this plastic squeegee. So I immediately jumped in the shower and rinsed it all off. And I had this, it looked like a, uh, a rash burn. beard, a chemical burn on my face. And I am not kidding. Second half of the story, uh, that evening we went out to dinner at uh, Frisch's in Centerville, Ohio. And uh, there's a, a group of three guys uh, sitting at the next table, three, three African-American fellas. Back then they might have been black, but I'm not sure. <laughs> and they were, they were looking and laughing and snickering to one another. And finally one of them looked over at me and he said, Magic shave? <laughs> That's all he said. That's it. How would you know? And that just sparked a whole conversation. I guess they had all tried this garbage and it just tore their faces off. Oh. So. Anyway, uh, so I'm celebrating by not damaging my face in any way or embarrassing myself any worse than I already do with my facial hair. One of, one of the secrets that I learned from my uh, sister-in-law, who was an internationally ranked gymnast, um, they have to shave... Everything. All of the areas, um, and you end up with razor burn. Well, one of the, the best ways to combat razor burn, apparently, is to use deodorant. And so I said, what, really? This is what she told me. Well, a couple of years ago... Use I deodorant as what? A lubricant? Or? No, as an aftershave. So huh? I shaved my head a couple of years ago. We are talking about this just last night. And I got just the most incredible razor burn... And I took some deodorant. You take a stick of deodorant and you just rub it over the spot. So if you're if you're having to mm. shave over and over spot on your neck to get the hair, and you know you're going to end up with razor burn, just rub some of your deodorant on that. Something in is the, it is like the antiperspirant? Is it the zinc in the antiperspirant? I doing? I don't know. I don't know um, because I use both. I mean, I use a deodorant antiperspirant. Um, so it might be, but whatever it is in there, it seals that up. You don't have any pain, mm. any razor burn. So anytime that I, I get that feeling like I've shaved too much, that's going to cause a problem. I'll put some deodorant on my face. And um, good tip. Yeah, uh, and I had my whole head at the time. We were told because of her research that it was only ladies deodorant does this. And so when I shaved my head, I I took Allison's deodorant and covered my head. Um, but. It turns out that, no, my deodorant works just fine. It's not the pink coloring in the deodorant. Nope. <laughs> nope. So, uh, my baby will be here early June. We don't know the gender yet, but wow. we're excited. And Ender's excited. Ender's so excited. <laughs> yeah. Ender's going to be a big brother. Yeah. If you want to see, we shot a video of us telling Ender, if you would like to see that, um, go to... Link to it. I will link to it, but check out Markwood Adventures um, on YouTube. It's the most recent video. So. All right, let's wrap this up so that we can go ahead and film <coughs> the segment that we screwed up last week. We'll tell you more about that on next week's video. Um, but in the meantime, make it a great week. Good to see you guys. Thank you guys for watching for the last year. Thank you for subscribing, all 601 of you as of this morning. Mm. I know. And um, just thank you for making it a great year for us. <laughs>